For today's video, we are going to talk about how to find the zeros of irrational functions and we are going to explain everything in details. On the first example, we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x all over x plus 2. To find the zeros of irrational function, the first step that we are going to do is to factor the numerator and the denominator. So let us have f of x and let us factor the numerator. The greatest common factor between x squared and negative 6x is x. Let us divide. x squared divided by x is x. Negative 6x divided by x is negative 6. Since we can factor the denominator, let us write x plus 2. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the restriction. The restriction that is the value of x that makes our function undefined. So to find the restriction, let us set the denominator equal to 0. And that is x plus 2 equal to 0. Let us move 2 on the other side of the equation. It will give us x equals negative 2. So the restricted value is negative 2 because if we are going to substitute negative 2 in the given function, it will give us undefined. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the values of x that make the numerator equal to 0. So let us set the numerator equal to 0. That is x times quantity x minus 6 equal to 0. So let us have x equal 0 and x minus 6 equal to 0. Let us move negative 6 on the other side of the equation. It will give us x equals 6. Since 0 and 6 are not restricted value, therefore, the zeros of the functions are 0 and 6. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 16 all over x squared minus 4x. To find the zeros of the given function, the first step that we are going to do is to factor the numerator and the denominator. So let us have f of x and let us have the factors of the numerator. Let us have the factors of x squared, that is x and x. And what are the two numbers? If we multiply, we can get negative 16. And if we add, we can get negative 6. And that is negative 8 and positive 2. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. And let us have the factors of the denominator. The greatest common factor between x squared and negative 4x is x. Let us divide x square divided by x is x, negative 4x divided by x is negative 4. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the restrictions. The restrictions, those are the values of x that makes our function undefined. So let us set the denominator equal to 0. Let us have x times x minus 4 equal to 0. So we are going to have x equal to 0 and x minus 4 equal to 0. Let us move negative 4 on the other side of the equation. That is x is 4. So therefore, the restricted values are 0 and 4. If we are going to substitute 0 or 4 in the given function, it will give us undefined. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the values of x that make the numerator equal to 0. So let us set the numerator equal to 0. That is x minus 8 times quantity x plus 2 equal to 0. Let us have x minus 8 equal to 0 and x plus 2 equal to 0. Let us move negative 8 and positive 2 on the other side of the equation. It will give us x equals 8 and x equals negative 2. Since 8 and negative 2 are not restricted value, therefore, the zeros of the functions are 8 and negative 2. On example number 3, we have f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 all over x squared plus 5x plus 4. To find the zeros of the given function, let us factor the numerator and the denominator. Let us have f of x and let us factor the numerator. The factors of x squared, that is x and x, and what are the two numbers? If we multiply, we can get negative 3. And if we add, we can get negative 2. And that is negative 3 and positive 1. Negative 3 multiplied by 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then let us have the factors of the denominator. 
the factors of x squared is x and x. And what are the two numbers? If we multiply, we can get 4. And if we add, we can get 5. And that is 4 and 1. 4 multiplied by 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the restrictions. The restrictions, those are the values of x that make our function undefined. So let us equate the denominator equal to 0. That is x plus 4 times x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us have x plus 4 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us move 4 and negative 1 on the other side of equation. It will give us x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 1. Therefore, the restricted values are negative 4 and negative 1. If you are going to substitute negative 4 or negative 1 in the given function, it will give us undefined. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the values of x that makes the numerator equal to 0. So let us set the numerator equal to 0. Let us have x minus 3 times quantity x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us have x minus 3 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us have negative 3 on the other side and positive 1. It will give us x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Since negative 1 is a restricted value, therefore, the zeros of the function is x equals 3. And this will be our answer. On example number 4, we have f of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 6 all over x squared plus 6x. To find the zeros of a rational function, the first step that we are going to do is to factor the numerator and the denominator. So let us have f of x and let us have the factors of the numerator. The factors of x squared, that is x and x. And what are the two numbers? If we multiply, we can get 6. And if we add, we can get 7. And that is 6 and 1. 6 multiplied by 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And let us have the factors of the denominator. The greatest common factor between x squared and 6x is x. Let us divide. x squared divided by x is x. 6x divided by x, that is 6. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the restrictions. The restrictions, those are the values of x that make our function undefined. So let us equate the denominator equal to 0 to find the restriction. We have x times quantity x plus 6 equal to 0. Let us have x equal to 0 and x plus 6 equal to 0. Let us move 6 on the other side of equation. It will give us x equals negative 6. Therefore, the restricted values are 0 and negative 6. Because if we are going to substitute 0 or negative 6 in the given function, it will give us undefined. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the values of x that make the numerator equal to 0. So let us equate the numerator equal to 0. That is x plus 6 times x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us have x plus 6 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. Let us move 6 and 1 on the other side of equation. It will give us x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 1. Since negative 6 is a restricted value, therefore, the zeros of the function is x equals negative 1. And this will be our answer. On our last example, we have f of x equals quantity x minus 3 squared all over x squared minus 9. To find the zeros of the given function, the first step that we are going to do is to factor the numerator and the denominator. So let us have f of x and the factored form of x minus 3 squared, that is x minus 3 times x minus 3. And then... The factors of x squared minus 9, that is x plus 3 times x minus 3. If you are going to multiply x plus 3 and x minus 3, it will give us x squared minus 9. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the restrictions. Those are the values of x that makes our function undefined. So let us equate the denominator equal to 0. Let us have x plus 3 times x minus 3 equal to 0. Let us have x plus 3 equal to 0 and x minus 3 equal to 0. 
let us move 3 and negative 3 on the other side of equation, it will give us x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. Therefore, negative 3 and 3 are restricted value. If you are going to substitute negative 3 or 3 in the given function, it will give us undefined. And the next step that we are going to do is to identify the values of x that make the numerator equal to 0. Since we have the same value of x, we are going to have x minus 3 equal to 0. Let us move negative 3 on the other side of equation. It will give us x equals 3. Since 3 is a restricted value, therefore, the function has no 0. And this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.